Doki iOS programmers. In this video today is going to explore how to detect iOS beacons with the iOS core location services. G'day, I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle mobile platform team. Okay, what we're going to do here in two videos is explore how iOS iBeacons can work with MCS. Now, if you've never worked with iOS iBeacons before, this video is for you. It will take you through how to write code against the iOS core location services. However, if you're a seasoned iOS developer, and I don't claim to be, but you already know how to do all of this, we suggest you skip on to the next video where we'll cover how MCS can specifically aid you with iOS iBeacons. Still with us? Great, let's continue on. So let's build a little sample iOS, iOS application to work with an iBeacon. Now there's essentially uh, seven tasks we need to perform in our code in order to work with beacons. First, we need to create a reference to the iOS core location manager. Next, we need to request permission from the user to monitor for the iBeacons. Then we need to actually check the device is capable of monitoring for beacons. Then we need to create a CL beacon region object with the beacon UUID, major and minor identifiers we wish to listen for. Then we next register a CL location manager delegate to handle the beacon events. And this is where we put in our custom beacon logic when we you know, want to see that the users entered or exited a geofence or beacon region. From there, we're good to start monitoring for the beacons, which will raise beacon events in the CL location manager delegate that we just created. Now, our application then will continue on, but at some later point to save the battery life, we also need to stop monitoring for beacons. Okay, so those are the seven steps. Let's dive in now to see how we do this in Xcode. In our sample application, we've created a very simple page with some buttons to kick off various code snippets in the relating view controller to just demonstrate these seven steps. For our first step, we need to set up a CL location manager object provided by the iOS core location services. To do this, we need to add the core location framework to our project first. Then, in our code, we can create the CL Location Manager reference. Having set up the Location Manager object, we need to ask then from the user permission to monitor for beacons. And you have the choice of either asking for when the application is in use or always in the background. Note it's a requirement since iOS 8 that in the relating info plist file for your project that you need to include a string message for NS location when in use usage description or NS location always use usage description respectively. Otherwise, the app beacon monitoring will fail silently. Next, with a call to authorization status, we check the user has actually given us permission to monitor for beacons. And with a second call to is monitoring available for class, passing in the seal beacon region class itself, we check that the device is currently capable of actually monitoring for beacons. Having done this, we can then define the seal beacon region we're interested in monitoring for. Now here, I've hard coded the UUID major and minor values in the class, then instantiated a seal beacon region based on these. In addition, I've defined a custom region identifier, beacon region, which is a handle we can use later for identifying one beacon region from another. Now, it's worth saying at this point, here I'm scanning for a specific beacon identified by a UID major and minor value. However, you are free to scan for beacons using a UUID alone, which will allow you to match any beacon as long as it has the same UUID value. For the beacon region, when we start monitoring, we can also define if we want to listen for the mobile entering the beacon's region or exiting the beacon's region. Now, these are in fact the default values, but it's useful to see here that you can set these yourself and override the default logic. From there, we can define for the CL Location Manager object a CL Location Manager delegate, which will handle the beacon events. For anyone not familiar with the CL Location Manager Delegate, it defines numerous methods that you can override with your own custom logic, where the methods are called on certain location-based events raised by the overall location services in iOS. So in this example, the Location Manager did enter region method is called when the phone enters the beacon's region. Conversely, the Location Manager did exit region method is called when the mobile device exits the beacon's region. 
Now, unfortunately, neither of these methods are past the identifiers of the beacon that was detected. Of course, in our app, we only actually have one beacon we're trying to detect, so we can kind of logically work out what it is. But what if we were scanning for numerous beacons? How would we solve this? How will we know which beacons region we have entered? To get around this, we need to override the location manager in region function, which gets called as a mobile device traverses a beacon signal. One of the parameters for that method is an array of CL beacons, which we can then use to work out which beacon the app detected. So let's extend this example by first simply extending the location manager did enter region method to report the region identifier that was detected. For our app, this will be the value beacon region. We passed to the CL beacon region registration earlier. If we define multiple beacons, we might use different identifiers, but iOS also allows us to scan for other regions beyond just beacons. So the region identifier allows us to add custom logic for each region we are scanning for if we choose to do so. Next, let's extend the location manager in region method as follows. One of the problems with using this method is, as it is called repeatedly as the mobile device ranges across the beacon signal, if we want to take action on those events, such as displaying a message to the user, we'll bombard the user with messages. To get around this, in this very simplistic example that I've mocked up here, I've added a Boolean flag, first beacon found. And we execute the logic in this method only the first time the beacon is seen, reversing the flag once seen to stop the user getting multiple messages. Now, within the method, you can see I'm also checking to see if we can see any beacons, because this method can be called for other location events besides beacons, which we need to filter out. I'm also checking if the beacon is an immediate distance away, and you can change this to other distances based on your needs. If all these criteria are met, then from the beacon passed into this method, I'm simply grabbing its UUID, major and minor value, and displaying that in an alert with a hard-coded message. Now, given in this app, we've only registered to monitor for one beacon with a specific UUID, major and minor value, we know what values we're going to get back here. Of course, alternatively, if we were scanning for an array of beacons with different UUID, major and minor values, this is why I'm showing you how to extract these details here. This will be useful for a real application. Finally, in the delicate location manager did exit region method, we'll display a message when exiting the region and we'll reset the first beacon found flag so we can show another message another time. Though possibly you want a more sophisticated algorithm here to stop the user getting bombarded with messages in one day if say they enter and exit our shop many times on the same day. Returning to our main code block, once we've set up the beacon registration and delegate to act upon the beacon events, we need to start monitoring for the beacon. Core Location Services requires that you make two calls. First, to start monitoring for region, such that the events of entering and exiting the beacon region are raised in the delegate. And a second call to start ranging in region, such that the in-region events are raised too. Of course, after turning on the monitoring, at some later point to save battery life, we'll need to turn this off too, so here's the opposite logic for turning off the monitoring. Alrighty, with the app running on my iPhone, and I'm just projecting the screen here so you can see it being recorded, what I'm doing in the background here is I'm bringing that actual iBeacon into range of the phone. And you can see after a few seconds, the phone detects the beacon and displays the message from the delegate. Alrighty, in this video, you've learned how to detect iBeacons with iOS. So stick with us in the next exact video to learn how MCS can make this much more interactive and useful for real applications.